Linebackers coach Kelly Papinga, special teams expert and yes. basketball extraordinaire. What's this all about? More on that in a moment. <laughs> we'll get to that. That's right. We'll get to that. I wanted to read this promo like we normally do. <laughs> BYU baseball tonight. It's eight. your show, assistant to the regional manager oh of BYU Sports goodness. Nation. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Drama. <laughs> BYU baseball tonight. Uh, final three home games for the yes. baseball team against Santa Clara. Three-game series starts tonight. Eight Eastern, BYU TV. BYU Radio. You can watch Spencer Lynn call that game. Yeah, that Compelling and rich. So now we get to the basketball question. Kelly Papinga, who is a football uh, guy and apparently now a basketball guy. Okay, the other day yeah. we are playing pickup in the uh, Richards building. This is a somewhat regular thing. You were stroking it. Like, you're not an outside shooter. You're a, you're a muscle it inside, work it up and in, get it easy. But you were stroking it from deep, too. What, what, happened, what happened Tuesday? Man, you know... Take two months off from shooting the basketball. I guess that's one of those days. You're just going to have one of those. I don't know. So I'm not going to play today. I just told myself. <laughs> it's a walk-off. You know, I was supposed to, you know, go back and play today, but I said, nope, not going to do it. I'm just going to let everybody believe I'm that good and just, you know, <laughs> maybe come back in another, another couple of months, come back in uh, July or something like that. Yeah. But I, I love when you guys uh, play because there's Jason Beck. You sometimes Guy Holiday will come and throw up a bunch of junk in the post, whatever. <laughs> but it, it's fun that you guys you guys exercise together a lot, right? There's, yeah. There's yeah. kind of the the camaraderie is physical too. You guys go out and hang out a lot. Oh yeah, no, it's uh you know especially with Coach and I coming back, he goes on walks with the offensive staff. They're hiking the Y like every other day and going on you know on that Bonneville shoreline trail and. You know, Coach Mendenhall and I have been out on our mountain bikes together. He's taken me on some crazy trails up by his house, and I'm not going with him again, just so you guys know. <laughs> He's <laughs> a mountain biker? This, oh, yeah, big time. I knew and, he was yeah. a surfer, and, yeah. and he liked to ride motorcycles, but yeah. he likes the mountain bike mountain as well. Mountain bike, he has a road bike. But, yeah, he took me on a trail last summer. And uh, just to just say, I'm not going back with him ever <laughs> <Wow>. again. <laughs> took me down this, this trail. It's called The Rush. And it's, there's a reason why it's called the rush, man. Huh. Let's just say I wrecked a, about five or six times. Okay. Thing. And yeah, I want him to play pickup oh, with yeah. us. Oh, we He'll ask never him, do we, it. Yeah, we ask him every day. He just he says, you don't want to see me play basketball. And I, <laughs> I kind of believe it. I've seen him throw a football. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Papinga with us on BYU Sports Nation. This is a big day for BYU football. Draft day last year, it was Ziggy Ansa. Bronco was there with the lensless 3D glasses yeah, on yeah, yeah. and the flat brim cap, which was a pinnacle moment in his life i'm sure in BYU football <laughs> history yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> now we approach a situation where it looks like kyle van noy is a sure thing you know consensus at least second round pick who are the other guys that uh have a shot to make it and not just make it but have a career in the nfl you know i think uh man all those guys um you know ethan that was just here here i think he'll have a chance you know uh late round to free agent for sure um, Spencer Hadley, I think, is in a similar situation with that. Uh, will be a late round guy, um, free agent for sure. Um, I believe Cody will get drafted. Um, I believe Daniel will get drafted. Possibility that you know Kane could sneak up in there and get drafted late will be an undrafted free agent for sure. But what do you, you think know, of Wani? Wani, um, you know the knee thing. I, I think he'll have a shot. I think he'll be an undrafted free agent. Um, might get drafted late. You just no, don't know. But there's just so many things working against him right now. Yeah. You know, a knee. Um, and it's not just an ACL. I mean, it was everything. He tore it all. Hmm. And then just he's older, you know. And so usually that's, you know, the downfall for all BYU players. Um, so I think he's 27. And then with a knee on top of that, um, I believe he'll get a shot. But to get drafted, I think, just with the knee issue. That's I think stretch, he would have yeah. gotten drafted because he had a great seed. Probably, oh, probably yeah. the best season in BYU history of an inside linebacker, just the way that he played. Um, but uh, just uh, with the whole knee thing, it's, I think it's going to be really hard for a team because he's not going to be ready until probably right up until fall yeah. camp, if yeah. not a little bit into you know training camp. And so I think it's going to be really hard for a team to you know use a pick on that. But I think for sure he'll have places to go. I mean, he was invited to the combine, and despite uh, the injury, yeah, which and was he'd even work awesome. out. So which is you know that doesn't happen almost never. So yeah, Kelly Papinga, the outside linebackers coach and special teams coach, is on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, when you look at the draft and kind of that experience, did you go through this trying yeah. to make the league oh, yourself? Yeah. What was oh, that yeah. like? Um, you know, I, I was an undrafted guy. I was, uh, I, you know, I went to the, the Dolphins. And, uh, you know, kind of I, I would say I'm in a similar situation as Spencer and Wani and all those guys where I was a projected mid-late guy, mid-round or late-round guy yeah. to a free agent guy. 
And, uh, and so I didn't really watch anything until probably like the sixth or seventh round. Um, and, uh, you know, and then I started seeing guys go and I'm like, dude, I'm better than that guy, man. <laughs> are you kidding me? You guys are taking that guy. But, uh, you know, and so that gets frustrating, but yeah. you just got to, you know, the thing that I found out once I got, you know, I get to Miami and then I was on the Rams and on the Cardinals, it, it, the thing, every team has a guy that, you know, a type of player that they're looking for that does certain things. And so you might not fit a team, um, great. And you might see another player that you think you might be better than, but they fit their scheme better and they do things differently. That's the so, buzzword, fit, yeah, right? Yeah, it's the fit. Yeah, and it's the same thing here. I mean, there's guys that, um, shoot, USC or UCLA or somebody might like, but it fits their scheme better than it might fit our scheme. And so um, very sim- you know, similar thing that you see in the NFL. But it's a very stressful time just so you know it's just it seems and like then it. when the draft ends it's a free-for-all I mean you're I got calls from I mean it was like within even before the draft had ended you know guys are calling me hey, I don't know if you're going to get drafted but you know it turns into a major recruit now it's you're getting recruited huh. all over again so Miami's calling me Cleveland's calling me Cincinnati's calling me Seattle's calling me uh the Rams are calling me everybody I mean I had like five or six teams saying hey come here blah 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 you know you'll fit our scheme and you know you're talking to the head coach and it's all happening like super fast and so as a high school kid you get recruited over about a year as an NFL guy as a free agent guy undrafted free agent guy you get recruited in about 30 minutes oh, wow. you got to make a decision wow. and so it's and because if you don't you know they're saying well we got this other guy and if you don't come with us then we're going to give him you know the contract that you might get and so I'm like oh gosh and nah. so I'm like <laughs> there my wife's right next to me I'm like what do we do but I I, I, I had a good idea my agent and I had talked about that. We kind of knew that was what was going to happen. And so we had an idea, and uh, we felt even before the draft that Miami was going to be a good fit. And uh, just because their defense was almost identical to the defense we played here. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was a good experience for me to go there, and it was fun. So I, you had – oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, d- I don't know your history in the league. What ended up happening with you in the NFL? So I was really good. This is how good I, I tell you. You were everybody. all pro. This is what I tell L8, everybody. Right? I was so good. I played on four teams in one year. That's how, <laughs> good, that's how good I was. And, uh, no, I, so I, I went to Miami <laughs> and uh, was there all the way through training camps, went through the last cut, and they uh, let me go. Then I was out about a month, and that I think it was in the beginning of October – um, St. Louis picked me up and they had me for about six weeks. And, uh, this is a great story. I always tell everybody this. <laughs> so I'm in the weight room on cut day and, you know, I'm just thinking life's good. And usually in the NFL cut days on Tuesdays, I don't know if it's still like that, but that's how it was when I was playing. And so I, you know, I'm in the weight room, life's good. I'm working hard. In comes one of the interns, not even the general oh, manager. Man. It's an intern. He's like, yeah, Kelly, you know, I'm sorry. I'm gonna... We're going to have to let you go. We're going to have to, you know, we got to make room for a receiver. We have injuries. And I just looked at him and I said, dude, because at the time, St. Louis was the worst team in the NFL. They were like, they ended the season like 2-14. and 14. And their linebackers, in my opinion, were not very good that year. Yeah. <laughs> and so I told him, I said, if you're cutting me, that means I am a terrible linebacker. Because the guys you're keeping are terrible. Those are not the words I use, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, you're just telling me right now I have no place in the NFL. I, I, I was upset. Well, the very next day, um, I got a call from the Cardinals. Um, they picked me up, and I finished the rest of the season. The year that they went to the Super Bowl, was able to go to a Super Bowl, so it all worked out. So I went from the worst team in the NFL to Super one of the Bowl best, team. yeah, to a Super Bowl team, and so it all worked out. Yeah. And uh, you know, all along the way, it was a great experience. I loved it all. Kelly Papinga, BYU outside linebacker coach and special teams coordinator, joining BYU Sports Nation. You had an opportunity to work with uh, a guy named Kyle Van Noy on a close personal level. Our Twitter question today is, where or what is your NFL draft prediction for Kyle Van Noy? What's your prediction for Kyle? Man. Well, without saying too much of teams that I talked to last week. That called um, you asking about him? Yeah, that called me, you know, and and mainly scouts. There was one D coordinator, and they told me not to say anything, so I can't say much. How many teams called Um, you? I had five. Wow. Yeah. And so, or four, four or five. I'm I'm pretty sure it was five. Yeah, it was five. Okay. And uh, the deed coordinator that called me, um, a scheme that Kyle's really not played before, which is interesting, but mm. they love them. And so, and they're a really good team. That's the other thing I'll throw out there. Okay. All right. I like it. Possibly might have been the best team. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, mm. um, but yeah, um, man, I just, where I see, I think, every, what I kept telling everybody, I think Kyle's versatile. I think he can do it all. In our schemes, most of the time, you know, he's lined up as an outside backer, but there were times, and many people don't know this, and this is what I was telling the teams last uh, week that we're calling, 
Juan Younga almost didn't play in our bowl game. Uh, his knee was yeah. his knee yeah, was yeah. all jacked up, and so we had Kyle practicing at inside backer. He almost started. Our, if Wani wasn't going to play, Kyle was going to be our starting really inside linebacker. Interesting. Yeah, and so he practiced for two weeks at inside linebacker and picked it up super fast and looked good good there. And so that's what I was just telling all these NFL teams is that um, we were really surprised as a coaching staff how fast he. We knew he'd pick it up quick, but how fast he picked up the feel of the game at inside linebacker and just being able to understand the coverages and run fits and all that. It's just the thing that I think Kyle's biggest, I mean, besides being a playmaker and he makes a ton of plays, he is really smart and he picks up on things really fast. And uh, he's, he's very intelligent when it comes to the, well, he's a very intelligent person, but I know mainly in the football atmosphere, he's yeah. picks up things super quick. And, um, you know, I just, to say where he's going to get drafted, man, I would say, do I have to like an exact no. pick? No, no, we're you thinking like you round. You're the guest. Yeah, you can do what you want. You want. <laughs> yeah, late round, late first round. Um, to I would say anywhere from the twenty seventh pick to the forty fifth pick. Okay, somewhere in there. He's maybe late picked. second. Yeah, okay. is my is my prediction. Um, you know, and he could drop to the third round. I don't know. It just what I I was just having the same conversation with Coach Tidwell. Um, if he if <laughs> um, Clowney gets picked first. I think Kyle will get picked sooner, in my opinion. But if, interesting. If Clowney drops, that's going to now drop everybody else that's, because Kyle is behind yes, Clowney in exactly. terms of big board. And so that's yeah. if he goes quick, then I think Kyle is going to come off the board faster than uh, you know what most people think. So. Okay, Kelly Papinga is on BYU Sports Nation. I want to transition to recruiting first? Let's talk about this picture <laughs> that Mark Atuaya tweets out this morning with Garrett. I Tucci. just saw that. They're in, <laughs> a, just they're saw in an that. orange. Challenger, Dodge Challenger. Oh yeah, rolling around in is. style. Yeah, what's up with that? And do you do this? Yeah, so this is what happens. So we have a, you know, a membership or deal with a Hertz rental car, and uh, I actually, I didn't have anything that flashy. But one time I showed up and I had a, it was a Mustang, and that's all they had. They had just a Mustang. That's and nice. It was like uh, I'll take that. It was you know a nice black color i'm like shoot man okay and drove around the whole week in, in arizona with it i'm like okay this is cool black <laughs> yeah black mustang and brand new it had i think it had eight miles on it when wow. i got it and Ooh. so and that's you know sometimes that's how it works usually we're driving around the typical cars at altima or uh sonata that's usually what you know we get rolling in but coach mm -hmm. 2j but yeah and they got Tua, lucky they have yeah. an orange general lee dodge challenger yeah the new version yeah <laughs> dukes that, of impre style. that impresses hopefully yeah dukes of hazard exactly <laughs> But uh, yeah, it just it just kind of sometimes the luck of the draw. Hey, sometimes you show up and you get a minivan. I've, oh. I've, I've, <laughs> I've recruited. I've all. recruited in a minivan before. Yeah, exactly. So I was the guys. I was the minivan mini uh, minivan mom there recruiting. I, I promise we're really cutting edge and hip at BYU. <laughs> Don't worry about this car. Yeah. So Twitter is becoming an interesting game, and we showed you the picture that, uh, uh, or we talked about the picture that uh, Coach Two J and Mark Atuaya sent out, but. When you follow recruits on Twitter, like there's this war going on between uh, assistant coaches and whatnot. How much are you getting into that, and, and how involved are you in that yeah, process? Yeah, uh, I would say I don't I don't think I tweet a lot. I would I think I only have like 300. And I've been doing it for like two years. 294. Now. There you go. 294. Yeah. Your tweet and, to uh, follower ratio is really good. <laughs> so. Oh, I don't even know what that means, but thanks. I, <laughs> that's good education right there. But I, uh, you know, I do it. All, I mean, shoot, I think there's been a couple times I've tweeted about something in my personal life, but mostly I use it just for recruiting. And it's recruits, uh, you find out a lot. Uh, mainly, the main reason why I have it is to find out what is so going on yes. with my recruits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who's the, because, you know, most of the guys are, oh, I just got an offer from Boise State or, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just got an offer from this guy. So a lot of the time it's just to follow their recruitment, who's recruiting them. And then what's going on in their personal life, you know, and you can find out a lot about a person, I believe, through their Twitter and what they're willing to put on Twitter. You know, some guys, we stop recruiting immediately as soon as we see their Twitter account and what they posted and things like that. And yeah. so um, and then other guys, you know, we I think we have it They're They're all about, you know, us. We can't actually direct message them, you know, send them, a, um, you know, something over their 
whatever their, their feed, I guess the it's Twitter called. sphere. Yeah. yeah. But we can send them like a message on the back end. You know what I mean? That nobody else can see those personal messages. Yeah, direct message. Direct message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so we can do that. It's just like sending a text yeah. message really. Um, but we can't text, which is kind of funny because it comes to your phone just like a text. It's, it's, it's a public text <laughs> yeah. and then it becomes private. <laughs> it's with a work around. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's had a huge impact on our recruiting and, uh, you know, getting Coach Mendenhall involved a little bit. He he started off tweeting a lot, and then now he's kind of faded off. And then recently he's kind of come back and started tweeting a little bit more. But I know 2J's into it. Coach Atawai is into it. Coach Al, myself. Um, it seems like more of the younger generation guys. Coach Holiday. I want um, Bob and I on so. there. I want Dr. Bob on there. Dr. Bob? <laughs> yeah, and I. Oh, Coach There's one yeah. thing. <laughs> I don't think that is going to happen. There's one so thing you know. I want you to tweet out today, no. Kelly. What's that? Okay, and that is how many days until August 29th? Countdown to we'll Connecticut. We'll tell you right now. 113. Oh, 113. We count down every day. There we go. Don't ever Can forget. I commit you to tweet out 113 days I will until do August that. 29th? I awesome. will do that. Awesome. 113, man. Hey, That's do you mind sweet. Do you mind signing our Rise Up flag before you go? For sure, man. For sure. Thanks for coming in the studio. Yeah, Kelly guys. Papinga with great stories on the NFL draft experience and on what's happening with BYU recruiting.